After getting my MFA in sculpture and having a 20-year career doing public art, I switched to working with marine debris. I collected a lot of it and I started working with small pieces and making small birds and putting them on interesting bases. Eventually that grew to become larger sculptures. After I acquired three truckloads of marine plastics that were collected on Midway Atoll in Papahanua Mokuakea, and I thought I made a mistake trying to use these materials. How could I make such large discards be anything other than garbage? When everything was sitting there in a pile, I looked over it and I saw the word dump, and that was stamped into the back of a toy truck. And then I saw a kid's baseball bat etched with the words, change maker. And I knew I had to try. It was then that I realized these materials could speak for the marine life they had so severely impacted. That began my quest to transform this decomposing marine debris into something that could change our behavior around single use plastics. It took a couple years to turn these throwaways into collectible art that would invoke an emotional response or have a presence. This process to find my mission, which was to give nature a voice while engaging viewers to prevent more plastics from entering the oceans. Originally, I started with the form of monk seals. They didn't look quite right at first, but eventually I got it. And then emperor penguins holding fishing floats all in their bellies. And then polar bears, and I was able to put the marine debris inside the netting so that these bears would act as holders of this marine debris. I was able to get an unlimited supply of derelict fishing nets from a bounty program that was started by Hawaii Pacific University. And the, the nets that the fishers had found out at sea weren't nets from Hawaii's fishers. They were from beyond and they were dangerous and they were trapping our marine life. And so I created those to be more open that almost have an appearance of of a shroud. Many of these works were showcased in, in sculpture installations recently at three outrigger resorts in Waikiki. And when, when they were put up, they brought tears to some viewers' eyes, and while others, they wanted to come up and tell me that they could not look at plastics in the same way again. And families, you know, all wanted to tell me what they were doing to avoid plastics. And it seemed like a very important message and I wanted to reach more people. So we did a, we used social media and did a FaceTime live and we reached even more viewers than we did in person. So along this journey, I've aligned with marine scientists and college and university ocean departments in addition to other experts that have done research or written about the global impact of marine plastics on our environment and the rest of the world. Originally, I started wanting to show how far the plastics have gone, but the plastics are everywhere. They're in our bodies, they're in our, our food chain, they're even in the clouds now. It's really about prevention and it's about our behavior and our choice. And I hope we choose wisely.